Hello and welcome to this Linotune tutorial. Um, I've opened up my Linotune and if you do the same it should look something like this. My display is going to be a little bit bigger for the sake of this tutorial. The first thing to do is going to be to set your inputs and your output. Uh, to do that you need to get to the rear panel and we get there by clicking the front panel. I typically click right over the numbers here and that should just take us right to the back panel. And there we are. Let's do that one more time. Here is the front. Click and we're to the back. Now we're going to set our input. This is going to be how Linotune listens. Um, it has access to your computer's defaults, uh, but just to make sure I like to go ahead and set mine. So I'm going to click here and it says click to change audio input device. And I've clicked it and I'm going to use the headset microphone for now, the one that I'm speaking into. And we'll do the same for the tone or the output. I'm going to click it and I'm going to go ahead and use my monitor speakers for this demonstration. Uh, to get back to the front panel, I just click the back panel, again off of the buttons, and there we have it. Now let's talk about note selection. Over to the left you have your note wheel, uh, with all our sharps and flats and our, all of our naturals here. And uh, note selection is pretty easy. Currently I'm at a D4. Let's go ahead and click and get ourselves to an A4. So I'm going to go ahead, and go ahead and click right on the A right there, and there we are. And we're at an A4. Um, to go up and down an octave, I can click right above my selected note, and that'll go up. And there we go to an A5, and go back down to an A3, and back up. Now, they also have keyboard shortcuts for these functions. So if I want to run around my note circle here, uh, to go clockwise, I hit the S key, and we'll see, we'll start running around clockwise. Notice that I went from an A4, and now I'm at a C5, which means that if I run around clockwise, I'm going to increase and then I hit the X key, uh, the, the key right below the S key, and uh, I can run around counterclockwise, and again that'll run me down. So here we are at A3. Now there's shortcuts for the octave two, which is the C and D keys on your keyboard. Uh, D will make it go up, and C will make it go down. So there we are back at an A4. Next, let's go ahead and talk about all these buttons here. Uh, the first one, it says zero cents. This is a way that you can adjust plus or minus cents if you have a reason to be anything other than uh, straight at 440. So if I click this guy here, uh, if I click above, I'll go up in cents. There we are, now we're plus five cents. And if I go down, uh, I will go click down, I go down to negative five cents and let's get it back to zero. This also has a keyboard shortcut. Um, this is gonna be right next to the keys that we're just using. F uh, makes me go plus sense and V makes me go minus sense and then I'll go right back to zero. Um, the next one here is what says A440. This is to set our Hertz frequency. So there may be a reason that you're tuning to something other than 440. Uh, let's say maybe 432. And if I click, I can go down. And if I click above, I go up. If I click and hold, it'll race down really quick. And here we're almost down to 432. There we are, 432. Um, again, there's a keyboard shortcut for this. It's going to be G and B. G will make me go up. B is down. And again, if I click and hold, I'll race back up. Let's get back up to, uh, there we are, back at 440. Um, the peaks function, if you click the peaks, it'll show a peaks display or kind of like a spectrum overview of different frequencies that are showing up. So if I click it here, uh, there we are. So uh, we're not have anything set right now. So what I'll do is I'm going to use my uh, iPhone here with a program to kick out a tone that we can listen to. So I'm going to kick out A440. And there we have it. And if I double click my peaks function, it um, should represent this. Well, now I'm talking. But if I stop talking, it'll represent uh, the peaks uh, along the boundaries there. And there you have it. So I'm going to turn that tone off, click off peaks. Next is the Hertz display. Uh, if I click it, it's going to show the Hertz instead of the uh, note names or the sense or the frequencies. So there's the Hertz. Um, it'll also show uh, plus or minus Hertz off to the side here, which we'll get to in a minute, versus the plus or minus sense. So that's what the Hertz button does. Um, a really great button here is the map button. Um, if I click it, it'll show me both the integer functions um, in relationship to my fundamental. So in that case, we had a 1, 2, and a 3, or a, a fundamental octave and fifth. Or if I click it again, it should show my note name. So since I have an A4 there, I'm going to have an A5 octave and an E6 uh, compound fifth. Um, 
Lastly, over here, we have the auto function. And now uh, the auto function is kind of a two-fold function. So if I double-click the auto function, like this, what Linotune is going to do, you can see it's really reacting to my voice now, is it's going to automatically uh, pick up on the fundamental frequency that's present and then represent that as your note. So um, I have a hand pan here that I'll play a note for you. So let's just pick one and we'll see how Linotune reacts. So you can see it automatically picked up as an A4, but now that I'm talking, it's jumping around again. Let's give it one more test. And now that I talk, it's going to go ahead and switch. So that's the double click function. Uh, the single click function, if I click auto off, and now if I just single click it, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to pick up that frequency and then set Lino Tune to it. So it's a really nice feature instead of having to click around on your uh, your note field here, or your note circle here, you're just going to click it once and then play a note. So let me click it once and I'll play a note. And now it's locked in at C5 and even though I'm talking it's still a C5. So that is the single click function on the auto button for Line of Tune. And again uh, these guys all have shortcuts so moving over on the um, keyboard there, to turn on your peaks, you hit H uh, to turn on the hertz, you hit J. Uh, to turn on the map, uh, you can toggle it as well by clicking M. And lastly, for N, that's going to be the auto. So a single hit uh, to just set the tone and a double hit to turn on auto automatically. Um, continuing on with the kind of concept of the auto function, um, there is a way to click on and off certain notes. So let's say um, I'm tuning something or checking something in D minor, and I'm working in D minor a lot, I can turn on and off certain notes. So to do that, I'm going to double click uh, a note to turn it off. So let's try to double click E flat here as that's not in D minor. And there we have it. So I've turned off E flat and I'll continue around the note circle here and I'll turn off the notes that I don't want to look at. So that's going to include uh, F sharp there and A flat and I want A and B flat. I'll take off B natural and C sharp or D flat. Um, now if I run around my notes uh, using my keyboard shortcuts um, you'll see that it's going to jump around. Currently it's set, uh, let's pick uh, A4 again and now if I just run around it's going to go to B flat 4 and you'll notice the next one it's going to skip that B natural and go straight to C natural and I got C5 so there it is skipping and it'll just skip around and stay in there. Um, this also brings up the concept of transposing. So I currently have it set in D minor and I can transpose this by both clicking and dragging like that. So now I am have clicked and dragged from uh, D minor down to C minor and I can also click and drag it and put it back up on D minor. Um, so that's a quick way to jump around and transpose from certain scales. Of course there's a keyboard shortcut for this and this is the A and Z button on your keyboard. Uh, a is going to shift it down by single half steps and Z is going to shift it up by half steps. So uh, there we go and that is how we select and deselect. Of course to add them back in I just go and double click and I can add all these guys right back in. Uh, so that's how you can uh, deselect and select uh, certain notes on your uh, note selector there. Um, next we're going to go ahead and switch to the back side, which we did in the beginning. So if I just kind of single click, I usually do it right along the numbers here, I should get to the back panel. We've seen this before because we've already selected our tone and our input. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the other buttons here on the back side. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of my bands. I'm going to select my octave band here. You'll see it's selected by this uh, box that's the rectangle that's selected. I can click other ones. And what we'll see here is that my octave band has a relationship of 2 to 1, or double the frequency of the fundamental. If I click the fundamental there, you'll see it has a 1 to 1 ratio. And of course, the compound fifth has a 3 to 1 ratio. Now, you can add and subtract as many bands as you want in here. So for example, let's just represent just the fundamental. Um, and let's take that one out. So I can delete it by hitting the X. And I'll take out the octave and delete that too. And now I just have one single band, just the fundamental. It looks kind of funny, but it, it's all right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, add in more. So I'm going to go ahead and select this guy, and I'm just going to hit the plus. And you see it's going to add in uh, the exact same band. And now I'm going to select that one, and I can adjust it. So I'm going to say a 2 to 1 ratio, please. And that's going to be my octave. 
Now on the back panel, you can use the shortcuts. So I'm going to hit M to represent my map. And there we go. Uh, we've got a B flat 5 and now a B flat 6. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select maybe just a friendlier note to look at. There we go. I like A. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add in another band. I'm going to select one band, uh, deselect, and hit plus. And now I've doubled that one. I've got an A6. And I'm going to go ahead and just hit uh, up here to select it to three. So now I have, uh, again, a compound fifth or a one, two, three relationship. Um, I can go further and I'm going to go ahead and add one more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one here and I'm going to say, please give me a four to one ratio, uh, which should be a double, uh, a double octave there. Um, but currently it's out of order. That's okay. The way that you deal with that is you just select the band that's out of order and you just double click the X. And you'll see now it has put everything in order for me. If I map it, I've got one, two, three, four. And if I look at my notes, I've got an A5, A6, E7, A7. So there we have it. Um, there is a way to add in other frequencies than just perfect integer ratios. And I recommend that you look at the Linotune PDF for this. I have it here. It's the guide that comes with it. Uh, it should look like this. If you scroll down, again, here's everything that I'm talking about. Um, there's your keyboard shortcuts for the record. Um, there's some in there that I didn't talk about. And if I keep going down here, I'm going to get some integer ratios. So let's say uh, you're tuning a note that you want to put on a major third above the octave as opposed to, say, a, a compound fifth, which is uh, common in steel pans in the higher notes. So I'm going to go ahead and select this guy. This is my compound fifth. I'm going to take out my double octave for now by just Xing out of it. And I'm going to take this guy, which is my compound fifth, and I want to put in a, a major third. So I look over here, and here's my major third, and it says it needs a ratio of five to four. So I'm going to take this guy and say, here we go, five to four. Now if I hit my map, let's check it. Uh, oop, uh, so this is one thing that you have to be careful of, is I didn't select the band I wanted to. So let's try that again, five two, four. Now if I hit map, okay, I've got uh, a C sharp six or a D flat six there, but uh, is that what I wanted? I don't think so because that is now below uh, my octave. So I wanted it a, a major third above my octave. So what I have to do is I have to double it. So I'm going to take my uh, numerator here and just double it. So I'm going to take this to 10 to four ratio and now that puts me at a D flat seven, which is a major third above my double octave. Um, and again, I can go ahead and change this back. Uh, there we go. And that is going to be, oop, I did it again. So I have to select it and now change it. Let's go down to a three, two, one, and I'm back to my fifth. So that is one way that you can um, adjust your bands, add, subtract, and use your integer ratios here to, to get exactly the band that you want. Um, now I'm going to go back to the front panel here and just run through, through some simple things with Linotune. I'm going to close this PDF for now and basically talk about some other features in Linotune. Uh, uh, the simple one is, is it can kick out a tone like a, a regular strobe tuner. Um, and what I do is I hover over here to the left of my band and I just click it and it should kick out a tone. Let's make sure it's not too loud. There's my tone. That's an A5. And if I click the next band, there's my octave, my A6, and I'll click one more. And there's my fifth. So that's a great way to get a reference if you're tuning. There is a secondary feature where if I click and it shows this little note. What this means is um, it's going to kick out the reference tone when it hears or perceives that. So I'm going to switch this to an A4. I'm going to play you a note. And what we should hear is about a one second delay and then we should hear Linotune uh, kick out a reference tone. So, so here's an A4. Oh, that was quite loud. And now let's try the octave. There I have my reference tone. So it's about a one second delay and it'll kick out the reference. And we'll just give the fifth an opportunity as well. Perfect. Um, one feature that you can use in Line of Tune, it's uh, an extra cost, but you can try it out in the trial, is you can use what's called the slave feature or you open up a secondary Line of Tune. So I'm going to right click here and open up another Line of Tune. And here it is. Let me go ahead and just adjust its 
display. I'm going to throw it off to the side here. And this is called the slave. And you can see that by it has this slave button right here. Now what the slave does is it's dependent on what's going on uh, with the previously opened line of tune. So uh, here I have an A4 and maybe I just want a, a whole line of tune that's nothing but uh, the fifth relationship and a, a range of octaves of the fifth. So uh, I have an A here so I'm going to go over to the slave line of tune and select an E. And I'll bring that down to uh, uh, an E5 is good. Um, so you'll see that uh, I've got the E6 there, so what I'll do is I'll select an E6 here. So now I have the fifth relationship going on in my secondary line of tune. And what's important about that is that I can use this to kick out both tones at once. So if I select maybe the octave band here from my dominant line of tune, and then maybe uh, this band here from my slave line of tune, and then I play that A4 again, what it's going to do is it's going to kick out both reference tones at once. So let's give it an uh, input here. So that's one way that you can do it, and uh, just like the first Alino tune, if I click to the back here, I can adjust uh, what I'm seeing here. So I have a one, two, three relationship here. Uh, but maybe I just want octave, so I'm going to take that to a four to one. So now I get nothing but E's represented there. Uh, e, let's see, we have a E6, E7, and E8. Let me take off that reference tone. So that is one way you can use the slave function of Lino tune. And I think that about wraps it up for Lino Tune. So again, what you're looking at here is if I give an input tone, um, here is an A4. Um, what we're seeing is we're seeing things running to the right, which means that they're a little bit sharp. We also see the plus or minus numbers on the right, which means uh, plus or minus the sense that is sharp. So this note's running just a little bit to the right. Uh, and but it is green, so let's talk about that. If I click to the back here, uh, we've got some other numbers here on the back. So for example, this times one right here, uh, if I click it up or down, it's going to adjust how quickly the bands move. So um, let's go ahead and click it up maybe to times five, and I'll give you that same note again. And you'll see the bands are moving much quicker. And you'll see it represents a plus 5 in the corner here, just to re remind you where you're at. Let's go down to maybe minus 5 and give the same input. And you'll see how slow the bands are now moving. Uh, default is times 1. And now this plus or minus 10 cents right here, what this does is this gives you uh, when it turns green. So let's say I take this down to uh, plus or minus 5, and then I go ahead and play an input note. Uh, being plus or minus 5, now uh, it does not go green for that because that is a new reference point for that. Now for all of you uh, tuners who used to use the uh, traditional strobe tuner, there is a button just for you right here. If you click retro, what you'll see is that you're going to get the retro look. There it is. And again, same thing, if I give an input tone, does the same thing just in the retro look. Uh, lastly, there is an info button here. If I click it, it's going to display what version I have. Um, in this case, if this is a trial, how long I have left, or the serial number for this trial in this computer, uh, website link, email support for Linotune, and a little bit more info there. So I'm going to hit OK and close that. I'm going to take off the retro, and I'm going to click and get back to the start here. So that should uh, just about round out the basics for Linotune. If, um, there are more advanced features, which again, you can read about here in the PDF. Uh, how to get out of equal temperament and run into things like just intonation and different types of stuff. Uh, scale and temperament files I didn't cover, but also is very uh, great feature, a little more advanced. And if you have any other questions, you can look here. Again, great reference for your uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, along with your uh, integer ratios here to adjust the bands other than your kind of one, two, three, four, five integer ratios. Uh, I hope that helps. And again, thank you, Lino, for this absolutely wonderful tuning program.